get this question from anyone here, but not from you too, because <laughs> because you are the you are see something you show to me is motivators, and I I I I I, I bet you what ten to one that the motivation that you usually give your student face to face, you cannot give it via learning. But this is another question. This no, is another question. No, Here you is a better instruction. No, 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 how, how do you vote your students? Forget about face to face or online or trade school or high school or any venue. How do you motivate I, I would invite Professor Gere to my course. To yeah, to, 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 to motivate them. Yeah. Both of you are really motivators. No. So how are you there? We can't do it. We can't do it. We can't motivate someone to learn. Impossible. No way. I can't. Impossible. I disagree. I disagree. Yeah, of course. Let me So the disagreement here is a road, not just a road. The disagreement, in my experience, in this kind of things, is a learning situation. I, I learned a lot disagreeing with them. I learned a lot. So the conversational session are designed to, uh, in order to make the participant learn, <laughs> not just get informed about the paper, to learn, to, learn, to process, to okay, think, wait, I, to I, disagree. Wait, 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 I understand. Let's let Jeremy. What, what were you going to say, Jeremy? I'm going to bring this back from last year. Here. <laughs> I took a video of it. I pulled, pulled a little stunt last year. I came in with a sheet over my head. It was a monk. I had my kids thought it was really funny. Too. I know, yeah, it was like this. You see the same thing I had. I, I didn't, I forgot my bolo tie. I said, well, I'll be goddamn if I'm going to wear a tie. I haven't worn one since my grandma's being funeral. I never will again. I had a sheet over my head. I borrowed my friend's tie. I might try to wear it. I said, well, I don't want to wear it. I'll wear it. If I wore it around my waist as a sack, I look like a medieval monk. But there was a reason I did that. Because I see an analogy here from education and instruction and religion to dogma. And I'm pulling a little Foucault on you. So we see that we get education to instruction, the link is the school. Religion and the dogma is the church. Now, if you're going to go to instruction, instruction is sectarian knowledge. Education and religion. Now, here's what I'm getting at. You want to know what the motivation is? This gets come down to dark stuff here. We're all Westerns here, basically. And ever since Martin Luther, we've had this angst. We're going to happen after you. I'm not a philosopher. I like to think I am. That, what's it all about, Al? And I would argue if you're going to be a real educator, you're going to be a monk. Now, if you take a look at the religion and the etymological thing of religion, is to cohere or bind. What makes sense out of it? Now, I'll argue. That okay, we're all stuck with this arms. What's going to happen after we? We're all ego. This gets into a little bit of Freud here. What happens after we go on? We so we we kind of uh, sort of like Buddhist stuff actually, because it gets you out of a lot of this crap. So what's going to happen after we die? We, what's going to what's it all about now? And I would argue that education and the religion in that lack of sense. What's it all about? Coherence and binding. That's what the, a motivation is. Now we also we're also uh, taken aback by all these things in our world, you know, and the Facebook and the ego and crap like that. But you dig, a, you, you dig, you pull away, pull away the covers, get down to the very bottom of it, and get to the core. That's where I'm, that's where I'm going to this thing. The core is basically what drives religion and education. The same thing. I argue that they're the same thing. Religion and education are the same thing. I lost it. Almost deep. Well, there's that philosophy again. Yeah, I, 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 yeah. Okay, let's put it in other in other terms. <laughs> so that, that's where what I'm we need, in my opinion, what we need is just an opinion, okay? 
medieval tribune, which was known to almost anyone in the Middle Ages, and this is the origin of the word trivial, okay, what? got three things, okay? Uh, grammar, I mean to talk correctly, which I cannot do yeah. in English, okay? So uh, Emotion are something that you cannot, is a can, something that you can take, contagious, how you say that in English? To contagious. 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 It's something that is contagious. If you are not motivated, you cannot motivate. Okay? If you are, if you don't have an emotion, it's difficult to transmit it. So a teacher, an educator, should be a good actor in the worst sense of the case. To feel the motive, the, the, the feeling that he want or she want to transmit to the student. So I think that to be an artist. All right, if so it, wait it, a minute, so close your eyes. Close your eyes. Close your eyes. Let me like sweat your hands around. Close your eyes. How are you, you going to do that online? That's my question! <laughs> That's my question. <laughs> That's why I disagree oh, with you. It's harder. It's Harder than well, but, but then, this, this is a real disagreement from last time. It's harder than hell. But yeah. you can do it. But okay. you can do it. Okay, okay. But what I you don't see how. Do, but wait a minute. What you can't this is our disagreement. But what you can't do, you cannot motivate students. Unless it comes from them, you can't control Motivation them. and emotion yeah. is something that you, uh, is contagious. You can, I don't see how you can make speech see contagious via via e-learning, I don't see it. But why why would we not some other people that I see some okay. hands over here? Why are you doing yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me finish the third thing. Oh, so we're not finished? The third thing. <laughs> I mean three, and one of them is three. The third one is rhetoric. To speak effectively. So why do you want to talk if you are not effective communicating what you are talking about? And that's the real sense of rhetoric, not to speak beautiful, but, you know, to, to communicate the idea. It's not... And ethics, you need ethics, not just because of the value of ethics. You need it because, if, because you need credibility in order the student to, you know, to take you into account that you are saying is credible. So if you're not ethic, you cannot be. If you are not an ethical guy, there is no way that you can teach. Because you need credibility, and that's called ethics. You know, so this is the, the, the sixth thing that you need. Well, the most credible people in the world are con men, unfortunately. <laughs> so so <laughs> that's, and that's one of the big, one of the big problems. But why would let some other people come in and 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 you have to be emotional about it. You have to be credible when you're teaching. You have to, you know, those things have to be perceived. There has to be passion in what you're doing yeah. too, right? You have to have passion with you. But the thing is, it all comes down to the student, whether they're distance education or face-to-face -face or in the hallway here when we talk, is to answer the question, so what? So what? Why are you here? Why are you spending the money to attend this course? Why are you taking three years out of your life to sit in this program? Why are you getting a doctorate for six years of your life? Why do you do this? And if they can't answer that, then they are not motivated to be part of it. Wait, they have an individual so, motivation. So why are you here? Why are you are using the majority wait, 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 in that wait, sense. Healthcare, healthcare, business degree, all the experience in the world. Why are you bothering to pursue a doctorate? That's a great question because the idea is I've spent most of my life in 
business, okay? Right. And so now my passion would be to be able to take that and do those things and say, listen, I have been mentored, I have been taught, I've been beat up by industry, I've made money, lots of money, I've lost money, I've done things. Now I must teach because it is my it's my calling, and that's why I'm here. And, and where, this, wait, where does that motivation come from? That motivation because yeah. it, does he deliver it? Well, he's good, though. He's pretty good. <laughs> All right. As much as we but know. I'm a spoon of talking devil. But what I was doing before I met Dr. So you know, I, am not I was already yet. seeking it. I was looking for that because I was at wait, that Wait, wait, wait. So it came from you, the student. Uh, it has to come from somewhere. No, uh, 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 yes, I know. Yeah. Yes. When you see a movie, a terror movie, very well done, <laughs> you are panicked. That the movie is producing the new that. Okay? Alright, that's a little emotion. That's what he does when he speaks. He terrorizes them? <laughs> <laughs> Only on my best days. Let's get a few more inputs into this. Oh, wait, 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 uh, uh, people from the professional careers and science, you cannot just teach the technical logos. Mm -hmm. You need to teach the usual logos in the world. You have to teach the informal logic. You cannot just teach just the technical logos. This is part of you, what you are doing. So what you are doing in technical terms, you have to see how you can relate it to non-technical terms. If not, it's not education, it's instruction. Well, David had his hand up just for your brief, and then we'll come back over here. Get everybody involved. All right, so I, I was responding to the, uh, the comment about passion. And, and I think what's implicit in that is uh, a passion for knowledge. But I think that's misguided. And really what we should be trying to instill in our students is a passion for disorientation followed by reorientation and successive cycles of that because that's what a creative life is. That's what, that's you navigating your circumstances. It's the Ortega, I am I in my circumstance. And, and instead, what we do is the students are set up, they're craving knowledge, and instead, if, if we can show them need, that they need to understand this better, but the process is one of disorientation, reorientation, not this passive, here, I'll hand over to you right. the facts. Yes. And so that's, that's an attitude that we need to instill in students, and I'm going to talk about that tomorrow. There's a specific example of that at the beginning, so you imagine these students starting their program, and the first question we ask is that, how many people in the room are in sales, okay? And so these are doctors, pharmacists, dentists, you know. And then how many hands go up? None. None. And I'm saying, okay, what about you, uh, ER doctor? What do you sell? He goes, well, I don't sell anything. I'm an ER doctor. I go, you sell emergency room services to people who pay. What about you, pharmacist? And the pharmacist says, well, I don't do that. I, I, I do drugs and things like that. I go, no, you sell drugs and candy bars. That's what you do. They get mad at me when I say candy bars. <laughs> but, but that's what they do. So but the, that's what you're saying. So what you had to do at the beginning is we shake them up and say, listen, you're not who you think you are, really. And that everybody's in sales. And then they snap too. Plus we tell them that they have no chance of passing the program if they ever answer that question that they don't not in sales. Every hand goes up because every every course start, starts that way. Who's in sales? Every hand better go up. Or done. Here's your hand up, bro. You and we, and we put you on the spot. I what I could what do with Oregon. Speaking, speaking about, I think that we see here a generational divide between between the baby boomer generation and generation X. I think that there is a generational divide. But we must take into consideration that we are working with generation Y and Z. Right. Yes, our students are... And it's out of control, and the expectation is out of control. A part of the education is to try to see how they can control themselves. Either well, that or no, but our job is to educate yeah. them across yeah. the same board. Same across the board. You're genius, actually. That's the issue, is trying to educate them across the board, and again, close your eyes, you're, 
welcome to my world, when you have people online, oh my goodness, there are people, I don't know if they're boys or girls. You know, I'm telling you, I don't care how old they are, but there's something unnerving when you can't tell by a name whether the person is a male or a female. It's unnerving. I'm sorry, it's I just unnerving. But, but so, so taking some constant feedback from your uh, students, like, would it help you get a little bit more, uh, like, a better picture? Constant of feedback? Yeah. Yeah. You're lucky if you get feedback at the end of the term. It's online. They don't have to do it. It's not part of the grade. No, the return. That you discussion board. That if you are getting board. continuous feedback with the eyes right. of the people. That's right. That's right. With, with their, but, with, with their but corporal, but you know, uh, 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 Sure. Of course, of course. Oh, and online, you're it not getting it. I mean, if you're teaching face to face, and you look in the room, and you see a bunch of blank expressions after you just went over how to solve something in Excel or whatever it is, you know you need to step back a few steps and, and help walk them through it and break it down a little bit more. But online, you really, you never know where you stand. I, I can assure you that most professors are incredibly good at ignoring or misinterpreting the feedback in an on, in a face-to-face -face class. We think we're good, but we're terrible at it. If we had a hand up over here, uh, did, did either of you want to say anything? No, you see, in my own thinking, uh, when you want to do education and instruction, you come back to every environment. Way they perceive education. And that is why the olden days the mission we say transmission of culture, knowledge, ideas, that's why from one generation to another, what you were know, talking about them. So I want us to look at the issue of instruction, education. Education I defined in 2008 when I when I had my PhD. That education is a potent weapon in the arsenal of a nation's development. When the professor contested it, the issue now came on board that. What and what are the content that you have to gather before you can say this is education? The content of instruction must be defined. The content of what constitutes education must be defined. That is when we can now look at such a situation. I think it's a potent weapon that should trigger development. Not that you just pass out. You can pass out some instruction that may not trigger development. How do you clear that one? Hey, hey, I agree with you. If you accept. <laughs> oh, no, I don't care. Well, that's that's not that's not not if you accept that, that we cannot confuse the ends with the mean yeah. without corrupting both of them. So, in education, many philosophers, when they wrote, they wrote about the ends, yeah. and once a while about the means. Mm -hmm. And others, especially psychologists, wrote mostly about the means and once a while about the ends. But the agreement is that there is ends and means. So one thing is the end of education, mm -hmm. and another thing is the mean, or the means, sorry. Mm -hmm. One of the means, one of the means, and necessary means, completely necessary, is instruction, but it's not sufficient. And we cannot confuse that without corrupting, corrupting both concepts. I'm going to give you a um, sexual metaphor that I uh, 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 taught, taught me a lot of things, this sexual metaphor, about means and ends. <laughs> I, when I've been in philosophy, I had a, 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 a Christian philosopher teaching me, Christian philosophy. And he tried, you know, to teach us what is love and what is to maintain the order of the universe, the universal order. So he gave this example. As Christian, our end is the law, is law. And one of the means, there is a lot of means. One of the, the means is the sexual encounter. So the, the, the sex is in 
in the Christian context, okay? Sex activity is a mean to love. When you disorder them and you take the love as the mean and the sex as the end, as playboys usually do, to get to make the girl love fell in love with them in order to have sex with the girl, with the lady. They inverted the, the, the natural order. Because the natural order sex is for is a mean for love. When you use the sex as a mean and the lady as a mean <coughs> and the, her love for you as a mean to get sex, you corrupted that lady and corrupted yourself. So this is a good metaphor for me. That was a good metaphor no, for me. Not if you confuse and then indoctrinate, indoctrination. No, no, it's that a Christian philosophy. It's corruption. Uh, when you invert indoctrinating, how do you no when you are saying Christian philosophy? Uh -huh. When the pastor preach, when the Bible preach, they indoctrinate. No, no, but that 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 I'm not talking about religion. Ah, okay. Well, I don't okay. So, so the same thing here. If I am right, maybe I'm wrong. Okay? But if I am right, and education, we confuse the ends of education with one of our its means, which is instruction, we would be corrupting both instruction and education. Well, but I got a question, I, and I think it raises, you know, sort of from the point that, that I think you were getting at is you, you, you know, your description of education is, you know, basically it includes morality and all these types of, you know, it's much broader. Stop my, stop my description. Well, huh? who's, is the, it, am I correct that's how you d describe education? In other words, it's much broader than. No, not describe it. I am a uh, 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 copying text of what people describe. Oh, 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 I don't care. I'm just saying that's a, a description you're comfortable with. I don't mean. I mean education right. is what is what remains if one has forgotten everything learned in school. So you okay. Okay. those are platitudes. Yeah, but but yeah. the content, <laughs> the content, content is a product of content. education. Education is a process. Education is not content. It's, uh, it, it produces content. But, but I guess the question I'm asking is, uh, as we talk about ends and means, what happens if you disagree with the ends associated with the university? Uh, you know, for example, uh, I am not sure that I would want uh, my children to be indoctrinated uh, in the, you know, in, for example, the philosophy uh, of some of, like, I don't want to mention any of the fields, but, but some of the fields basically start from a conclusion and then basically treat the world as... Okay, let me agree with you. Let me agree with you. Okay. Let me agree with you. I would say what I said to my students during 35 years. I failed in convincing this university to provide you education. But so I'm going to alert you that what, we are, what you are receiving is higher instruction. Yeah, but, but in many cases, this ask you, your where parent, ask you your yeah. parent to give you the education that we are not giving you. Yeah. Well, well, let's take an, take an example of you know a Marxist you know versus a capitalist philosophy. I mean, there are some intrinsic values there. Yeah. For example, how you weigh inequality versus uh, growth and things like that, which you know are fundamentally different. And at a typical uh, U.S. University, uh, if you move outside the business school, uh, you're going to find a 10 to 1 ratio of, of those with a very different value system, and they believe that they are educating the students based upon presenting that value system. Now, the question I would ask is, uh, you know, 
we act as if education is a good thing, but it can also be viewed as indoctrination in a particular value system. It's more than just content. Yeah, yeah. Indoctrination, and, uh, indoctrination is a concept completely different than indoctrination. Okay. Yeah, but, 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 but if you're trying to change people's values, that's the end. Well, but that's, that's the, the end. Okay, because my intention is to change them. My intention was yeah. not to educate them. Well, you, but you want well, it's, it's a problem of intention what you are doing. But you want to teach students to learn how to learn and to be thirsty for knowledge. Well, you don't well, want to, yes. you yes. Don't want oh, to yes. give them, here's the book, here's the facts, here's what yeah. the exams yes. are going to be on, this is instruction. But to teach them how to learn, how to use yeah, right. the library, right, right, right. how to be motivated okay. and okay. driven part, in their the field, the part, that's education. The part, the part, the part. Uh, to provide them with the, with, with the ability, of a learning ability, learn to learn, yeah, yeah, yeah. is another mean, is still mean to achieve. It's an important and necessary mean that you teach them how to learn by themselves, how to learn, uh, uh, to learn how to learn. This is another mean, a necessary mean, and you, but you cannot reduce but, but the age to the But with instruction, you do that. with instruction, you're not necessarily yes. teaching them how to learn. You're not teaching them how to be motivated about learning. You're not necessarily the teaching way, them about the only way, the only way that I can see how you, uh, 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 a student, can learn how to learn is by being motivated to learn. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. And this is, not just, this is not just instruction. I understand. Tim is revved up and motivated to earn that doctoral degree beyond belief. He wants that degree more than anything. He's living, sleeping, breathing, eating, um, getting ready for the dissertation process, upcoming, or completing his courses. He could be more motivated. Mr. Motivation, okay? My student? Doesn't matter, face to face. Online. No, it, it doesn't I, matter. No, no, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. I have some students who are fantastic online who are going above and beyond doing extraordinary work that I don't know where it comes from. It's extraordinary online. I could show you in a minute. I could log in. Yes, I, I know. I'm talking I about could average. show you. Okay. Uh, but, but still, in the face to face classroom, guess what? There's an awful lot who are average. Okay. And that there was, are few who that was that our disagreement really last time. And it's, it's the same okay. thing, that, mo that motivation, in, that motivation, in, in, in they, ha they have it in the gut. Either it's in the gut or it's not in, in the gut. In all of these drafts, you're, you're not going to find not once the word e-learning, I'm avoiding that. Okay. okay. But, but I would like at least to separate the concept still, of education from instruction as mean but and wait, But wait a minute, that motivation is, is from the gut, it's from the gut. We, we can do a little dog and pony show and try and get them excited well, and wrapped up with projects and things. Let, let me, uh, you saw I agree with you, but okay. let me uh, now be one example to be against. In the first uh, year in college, yeah. my son yeah. just had to take math course, mathematical course. Okay. And he is not an, an engineer, he was not going to be an engineer or a scientist or anything. Okay. And all in his class there are this kind of people who didn't know what they're going to do. Nevertheless, there was a medical class. They always, all of them, or at least my son, I, I didn't ask all of them. My son remembered that was the most interesting class in his life. He became you know, a journalist, an editor, in absolutely non scientific field. But he remembered this, but they skipped one class or failed one class about movies. He had to tell me what he liked, what he didn't like. It was so boring, he didn't take it. But this mathematical class, he said, it was the most, and by the way, I know the professor. Ah, okay. He is, and I asked him, he's my friend, and I asked him how he achieved it, because I couldn't do this kind of things for people who are not motivated at all in mathematics or physics. So what did he do? He gave me a few examples, he couldn't explain, but he gave me a few examples of how he do it, and I understand, it was a performance. A performance. So, I know this example contradicts what you say, okay. contradicts what I know how to do. I couldn't understand how to repeat what he told me, 
but I have seen that in, in this example it works. I mean, the best professor in mathematics that they had was someone writing. Look at that. How wonderful. How beautiful. Can you see that? How beautiful. And all of us were talking about it. About it. <laughs> <laughs> but he kept doing that once and again and again. And he was so ecstatic about what he was doing, you know. So he got our attention just to see what he's talking about. And he was feeling the state of mathematics. And you can see it in his face, in his body expression. Look at that, look at that, look at that. And all of us look well. <laughs> <laughs> But if you, but, but if you, and at least we attended. You went to the show. But we tried to see what we see. Did you ever see that it? That we are not seeing. Wait, did you ever see it? Not me, but other people see it. So, <laughs> but, but you know, the thing is that's, you know, and, and if, if the argument is having passionate faculty is, is, you know, is better than, than having a faculty like Ben Stein and Forrest Bueller's day off, basically listen, lecturing facelessly. I don't think there's going to be much debate, but you know, part of what you do as a faculty member is you create a venue for instruction. And in online learning, the nature... Wait, wait, wait. Do you create a venue for instruction or a venue for education? Well, a venue for whatever we're calling it, because I don't necessarily no, see such a big difference. Any in uh, instruction in education, but not any education in instruction. Yeah. Because mean and end. The reason, well, the reason I say, for example, learning multiplication tables, that does not sound very, you know, that's not a terribly interesting thing. But if you actually want to learn higher mathematics, unless you have those multiplication tables by row, every time you see an equation, you are going to have to use more chunks of your memory to handle the multiplication part. And as a consequence, you're not going to be able to solve the equation. Sometimes you need to practice things over and over again to move up to the next level, and that may require what's called instruction. And that's just the way the mind is wired. So I, I gotta be careful saying that about Luke near the end, because he, he actually knows how the mind wires. But uh, the, reason, uh, the reason I ask is, for example, uh, Charles, uh, no, but Charles wasn't here, so I can't point at him. I, I had an example, uh, Charles Aram took my online uh, learning course, which was a case discussion course. Every week, they discuss cases, and every week they conducted an online debate and then had a discussion on that online <coughs> debate. Now, during that entire course, I was not synchronously online with them once. Uh, what I did the first couple of weeks of that course, though, is I went through their discussion participation, and I did not participate in the discussion. For each person, I created a minute and a half video just commenting on their individual participation in the discussion. I only did that for the first couple of weeks because after that they really got it. Uh, for the rest of the course, the only thing that I did was grade their discussions. And I always graded each individual participation so that they knew that I was paying attention. If I gave them anything less than a good grade, I would always comment on it so they understood what I didn't like about it. Now in that particular course, uh, I, I, you know, the, the course evaluations were straight fives out of me, which is the highest rate across the board. People went to the department chair saying this is one of the best courses that they ever had. But the irony is, I had no interaction with the students at all. When Charles <laughs> came, sent me an email saying he wanted to talk to me, I figured he was upset about the course, because I had no idea whether they were liking or not. It actually turned out he wanted to join the DBA program. What I'm saying is that was creating a venue in which students could interact, and that turned out to be pretty effective for that particular type of course. Not everybody would have liked it, but I think we need to be very careful when we generalize about these things, because everything is, uh, to quote David, a view formed under special circumstances, which I think is one of the great lines. Uh, and so, you know, basically there are many, many different ways to, uh, to skin a cat, if one is inclined to skin cats, but the point is that uh, 
you know, sometimes what we need to do is provide our students a portfolio so you don't end up constantly hitting people with something they don't like. Or sometimes you get specialized institutions that only attract people who like a particular approach. For example, when I went to Harvard Business School, we did 900 case discussions and nothing else during the MBA class. I mean, we probably had 10 classes where there were actual lectures and 900 case discussions. Well, if you didn't like case discussions, you wouldn't go there, but if you did like case discussions, it was an incredible experience. And whenever you look at an educational context, what you need to remember is there are really four things that are interacting. There is the content that you're trying to convey. There is the medium that you're using. There are the characteristics you're just of the instructor. You just said it, the medium. The medium, right, which could be a classroom, it could be online, it could be online. We need that agreement with you. And, and there's the I nature of the that agreement with you. And the point is, all four of those things interact, and you can create great experiences. You know, you've got a lot of things going on. what you are saying, that the medium could be anything. Could be online, it could be outside there, could be in the classroom, could be in the airport, could be at the airport. So, but, but, I'm corroborating you. Yeah. I'm corroborating you that yeah. it, could, it could be any medium. Yeah. And the danger is when you take things, when, when you take an interaction that's going well between the four things, and then you move three of them over, but you know, for example, you take what you were doing in a face to face class and move it online unchanged. That almost never works well. Uh, if you take something that works really well with one type of content, and move it over to another type of content. When I teach programming, I teach it in an entirely different way than I would teach my capstone courses in business. Now, I've done both face-to-face -face and online, and the courses could not be more different. Uh, and so, essentially, you know, what I'm saying is that, uh, you know, first off, there's the question of what is education versus what is on instruction, because cognitively, I think it's a lot harder. I think a lot of times what you call education is an emergent process. Let me, let me go to an extreme. Okay. A hyperbole, okay? With that fabulous course that you gave, everyone was happy with it. Why you didn't, get the, uh, didn't give them the certificate of graduation? Why didn't it? Because I'm not authorized to give them certificates of graduation. If you were authorized, you wouldn't do it. Well, that one pretty good class. And you see what I mean? This is a good meme. This is one of the good meme, but it's not the complete education. It's not the complete You need program. more courses, at least. Okay. So, all what I'm trying to say is to, to differentiate between means and what ends, to differentiate them. You see what I mean? So this is why I went to an extreme. The chief, are you saying that a degree equates with education? I'm not saying that. No, I'm not saying that. I never well, you're saying a course? No, 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 no. You're no, saying no. a course doesn't necessarily no, no, no. I, I found more education in people that would, would not know how to read. That I, in, I, I, that I, I, in I, many, yeah, in many PhDs. Yeah. The next level of course was the one that you talked about. <laughs> uh, the I graduate, graduate, graduate well, this particular <laughs> course was a master's <laughs> course. <laughs> However, I actually <laughs> used the same format <laughs> with another graduate <laughs> course. Uh, both capstone courses at the end of the program using, you know, with very similar results, uh, you know, which, I, which always surprised me because I always expected that I was need to interact with them a lot more, but actually, you know, I, I, I look at the discussions occasionally just to make sure they're not going off track, but, but, but the students do a lot better job. They put up like 50 pages of text every week in faculty, and the folks in our, in the folks in our advanced instruction, uh, uh, our academy for uh, teaching and learning excellence we cannot believe the discussions that I'm getting out of my students. And, and the thing is, I just set up a venue that happens to work well for this type of subject. Matter. Actually, somewhat going back to what she said about the culturally, I think the, the goal, so we talked about education and instruction, but perhaps the end, the means and ends, the end is a larger discussion. Yep. Because it could be the job, it could be the, just the extracurricular. It's not just learn to learn. There's a lot of masters who are not prepared to learn to learn. They know what they want to learn. They know what where they want to apply. 
So when I teach an online course, I literally cannot tell whether they're male or female by the names. My, my colleagues tell me after another three years and some will get them, and I can't. Whereas my undergraduates are almost all local students. And, and it just, it, it seems like this particular technique seems you know, to work reasonably well. But, but you know, it's one of the, you know, when I first did it, I was, you know, I was really surprised. I just, Basically, I was going to say, I was going to say, I would say also just the fact that you have a Google video. Online does not have three senses, it just has text and not even audio. No, online you can have a video. But that means that you can do it. Just that one is a video. Yes, well, there were two types of videos. There were two types of videos. I did one at the end of each discussion. I had a video that went out to everybody in the class that commented just about my analysis. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I can say that. No, I, I'm asking you, you believe that. You believe uh -huh. that 
education is an incomplete contract. Lifelong learning. We are here today. You could be patient. There is tons of things you are talking about the tons of what you are about the end. You are talking about the end. Education is something that we are talking about the end. Okay. The way I describe it is education is what we are talking You are talking about the end and the end. Okay. And she now raised that issue that the the end is so large. I'm going to ask you a question. Education is... How do you define the, 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 the value of the head? Okay. In my terms, I'm not now using other terms, okay? It's my terms. But this is a personal thing. Education is what you, pre what you prepare you for life. So, what you are receiving, what we received in the university is how to be useful to the industry. We are not receiving how to be useful to ourselves. I disagree with you. Well, that's, 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 that's my experience. We are preparing the people. When you marry a degree, it is not only, it is not only the academic uh, morally, you are morally fit, you are socially adjustable. Is that not? For us, no, no, I'm telling you that with few words. What is what you got? Education, and to what the you effect of education is to prepare the person for life. Life? Correct. Yeah. And there is an external life and external life. And there is a trade-off between both of them. You cannot prepare the person for the external richness, atrophiating his capacity of internal well, you see what I mean? You have to have a trade off. You cannot, you know, push him to be just useful to the industry. You have to prepare him to be useful to himself. But this gets back, this gets back, to the, this gets back to the business of being a monk. Now, the monk basically is preparing for two things: one, the internal life, as well as the external life. And that's why I use that, that's why I went back to that comparison, that's what I did uh, last year. That in order to be really, I think you were devoted to education, you pretty much have to be that monk. And this gets into, it, it's more than an attitude and the motivation, but it gets into, now he, he, we know, I'm not sure if we have the language to, to say this, but the developing, what is it all about out there? It's not simply satisfying the technique. Yeah, you have to have the technique to produce all the crap in order to live in this real world. But basically, it's preparing oneself. And not only preparing oneself, but education is about nothing. It's, it's not, it, it, I'm not sure if, see, education produces the content. Education is not content. It's preparing a content, but of a special type of content. Not the content about how to construct this. Yes. See, this this is based on education because education produces the technique yes. which produces this. Yeah. But the education is a process. It basically is, again, back to the monk. 